All right, Scott, here we are. Big challenge this week. One I'm looking forward to. Well, what do we got? What are we doing? So we're going to do, this is near and dear to me. We're going to do Nona's Sunday Pork Gravy. Now, it's not I that got, brown I have, I have stuff. I a lot of questions from this. It's not that brown <laughs> stuff you put on mashed potatoes. There's a real nice, rich, thick, luscious, <laughs> velvety gravy that goes over your macaroni. And it has shredded pork in it. Okay. Nothing so let's better. start with who's Nana? Nona is my grandmother. Okay. Nona is Italian for grandmother. All right. Yeah. And now, so it's not brown, this gravy. No, not it's like not brown. It's not not like Thanksgiving potato. turkey no, time. No, no, no. Okay, no, no, no. This is a real traditional. I want to say South Philly gravy. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in Italy, they do call it gravy because it has meat in it. Okay. Right here, we we we, we have that war. Certain sections of America, it's gravy, it's sauce, it's marinara, right. it's pomodoro, whatever it is, it's all good. But I'd love the argument. You know, I come down on the side that it's gravy even if it don't have meat in it. Because of the way it's made, it's thick, it's not loose, it's not runny. Yeah, I've never called it a gravy until I probably started having you know, right. I've heard it be called a gravy. Right. I'm not making the argument that it's not. Right. I just never would have thought to call something that's well, not. So, I'm in South Philly, so right. it's gravy, right? Okay. I watch uh, Valerie Bertinelli on the cooking show. She grew up in Delaware, which is 10 minutes away. Right. And she swears that no one there called it gravy. It was sauce. Right? So when she does her show, I like to watch. And she, because she talks about a lot of Italian stuff. Okay. So, you know, I, I like that. And I was surprised that she was only 10, 15 minutes away from where I grew up. And she never called the gravy ever. No one did. They called it sauce. So it's really like you could be two miles down the road somewhere and it, they have a different term for it. Okay. But it's the great word. It's t-shirts. It's gravy. It's not sauce. It's sauce. It's not gravy. Right. I, I'd like the argument. I'm, I'm ready to try it. I'm yeah. ready to see what the... Well, and you're going and after that you do eat it, you're going to say that's a gravy. Okay. Because of the way it's prepared, how thick it is. It sticks to the macaroni. It's not loose. It's not runny. That's what a sauce is. All right. Okay. This is not a sauce. This is a gravy. It's gravy, people. <laughs> well, let's go get the let's go get the gravy ingredients. <laughs> we, we got our shopping list. We're gonna head inside. We'll see you in there. All right, Scott. So this is what we're gonna to get here for the known as Sunday pork gravy. We got our pork. I like to use the country ribs. Uh, the boneless, uh, great flavor to the gravy. A little pecker, pecorino romano sprinkled on top of the dumb. We got some garlic, onion, parsley, basil. Uh, the tomatoes are like to are at the other store, so we're going to run over here and grab those, and then we'll see you in the kitchen. All right, so here we are in the kitchen. Made it back, safe and sound, with all those beautiful ingredients. Looks great. Yeah, so today is uh, known as Sunday pork gravy. I'm excited, though. I, uh, I don't think I've ever had uh, pork gravy like this. Right. Um... And it looks good. I mean, you know, the ingredients look fresh. It looks great. Thank you. I feel like uh, similar a lot of the things that we've cooked. When I say we, I mean you. Thank you. Not that many ingredients. Right. Right? I mean, right. there's not a ton of different well, things that are going to make this up. That's what it comes down to. It's not, it's simple food. Italian food is simple. Right. Food. There's not a ton of ingredients in it. That's why it's time to take. Yeah. I always talk about overcomplicating the food. Right. Too many ingredients that they fight with each other so then you get nothing out of it. So, you know, that's why... It, Simple is better. Uh, definitely makes for, for just a, a better product. If you look, you would never think you'd get the flavor yeah, that you want to get. That's where I was at. When, when we were doing this, I was always like looking for where's the rest of the ingredients. Right. Like where else it's coming right. from. Um, so no, I, I think it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be going. Um, you know, I know we'll, we'll get into it probably multiple times on the episode. Uh, the, the debate of gravy versus sauce. And you, know, you can educate us more. On the, the gravy versus sauce, and maybe what we taste. In my it. mind, there is no debate, but you know, it's gravy. But, but I, I enjoy the, the discussion I have with people. And when I say discussion, I mean arguments. <laughs> so, because I feel like on that one, I don't necessarily know I'm on your side. Like I said earlier, yeah, I don't never really call it a gravy. I don't know, sure. But like, so what would be a sauce then, right? Because we're still, you would still use sauce to describe something. Right. Sauce to me is more like a marinara. Okay. It's thinner, it's runny, uh, you know, 
a gravy as you're going to see today is thick. It, it sticks. It sticks to the macaroni where a sauce doesn't. Why would you compare a gravy and a sauce? Or I get upset that there are two different ones, which is more. Right? It's a marinara. It's a pomodoro. I mean, you can go on and on and on. Right? But people get really offended when you say gravy. I, I, I don't know why, because it is the best part of it. I don't think anything else is as good as the gravy. Uh, you know. So it's not that there are uh, dishes that you cook that have sauce in it. So you would make a, I don't know, a pasta, a meat sauce, like or a marinara, well, that would be so you, a sauce, not a gravy. It's, it's, it's not a meat sauce. The cut? Because it has meat in it, it's definitely gravy. Got it. So that's where we're going on definition. Your right. definition, your world, it's no, the meat. And no, that's where no, we're going to no, go. Any no, world. No. Anytime. Not my world. <laughs> okay, because in my world, it's gravy no matter what. If I don't make the same combination without the meat, to me, it's still gravy. Okay. Because of the thickness of it and how rich it is and how it sticks to the macaroni. But it could be a sauce if there were no meat and if the consistency was like... Oh, oh, it's oh, runny and it's yeah, good. So that's what I'm trying to figure out of where the, like, the cut line would be. It has to be runny and no good. That's okay. a sauce. So, I, I don't believe that there's a sauce, to be honest with so you. So you're saying like, so it's just like a plain marinara sauce. It's marinara. It's not a sauce. It's and marinara. you would never make that. Okay. I make marinara. It's it's quick. It's simple. Okay. Uh, it's good. But it's not sauce. It's a marinara. Okay. So what would your what would a sauce be then? Uh, they would kind of get like crushed tomatoes and they would cook it with some spices. It's really watery and runny. So Alfredo, like Alfredo sauce, would that just no. be a sauce? No. Well, Alfredo is, is not to me. Okay. It's a cream sauce. So that's okay. Okay. The Alfredo sauce, I mean, that's a sauce because you're, you're making basically a pan sauce. Because I feel like, right, I mean, the date, because we can say go on forever. I feel like the Sopranos, you know, right, way back, yeah. how many years ago, Vito said to Tony, it's good gravy. <laughs> the, gravy is sort of, the gravy's good tonight yeah, or something, something like that. Yeah. So that, I feel like, restarted the debate. Uh, it, it made it more public because okay. the debate never ended. Never right. 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 And it's not going. Okay. And some, some people that watch this, they're going to be yelling at the TV. Who is phone. this guy? Yeah. Who is this, this guy? they talking about It's sauce. It's not gravy. He must be from Philly. Yeah, I am from Philly. And it's gravy. <laughs> <laughs> so is it so. regional? Is it like... Hoagie versus well, no. Like, as I said earlier, when we, before we went shopping, Valerie Bertinelli uh, is from Delaware, okay. which is you know 10, right, 15 minutes far. outside of Philly, twenty yeah. minutes at the most. And she was like, "No, I don't. Never heard gravy. Like that's right up. Like right." She said it to her, "It's sauce." So I don't think it's a region thing. Okay, right? Because I mean that's part of Philly, basically. Yeah, you know. So you know we didn't get down to all that. I just think it's what you were raised on. Right. And in my city, Philadelphia, we gravy. It's on the menu. You go read the menu, it says gravy. So, you know, when people say, oh, it's not gravy. No, look at the menu. It's gravy. You know, but if you go out to New York, you will see certain places that have gravy on the menu and certain places have sauce. It's more argued there than in Philly. Okay. In Philly, it's, it's gravy, except for like maybe some transplants come in and you know, want to, you know, put their, you know, what they believe on you, but it's not going to work. Yeah. But yeah, that's about it. You know, it's, it's I think it's just where, where, what your, maybe your grandparents or your parents or your great grandparents it. called it. In New York, you know, that's where people, Italian descent stopped first. So obviously I had a lot more from different regions there. And, right. So you got more of an argument there than, than, than we normally would. But in Philly, it's great. You, you don't see salt on menus or anything. Yeah. Well, it was always you could cut out the, you know, uh, onions, garlic, onions, garlic, some fresh Italian parsley. Then pretty, pretty good. You know? I mean, if you need it to be easier than this, I think you need to get into business because this is really simple. It, does, it really doesn't get much easier than this. And once we get it in there, how long, you know, so we'll start this. And I know this one's going to be a sit that we're not going to get once, doing stuff with. But. Once I get it to a boil, I, I like it to cook up to three hours. Okay. At least two and a half. Now, when I say that, it's just sometimes it's just boiling too heavy. Even I got it on the lowest temperature that I, I don't want to overdo it. So I turn it off at two and a half. If I can get a nice simmer on it and stay that nice simmer, I want to go three hours. Now, would this be something you recommend that you're prepping and using it for 
service that night, or is this maybe something that you can use tomorrow for service? No. Well, for believe it or not, if it sits overnight, it's even better. Okay. If so it sits for two days, even better. Three days, even better. Got it. But, you know, I usually made it, I would make like two batches a week. I would okay. do uh, two, three batches together, so I would make six batches a week. Got it. Uh, and I would at least make it a day before. Got it. So in, you don't want to be, if you don't need to be, we don't want to be serving it tonight. You don't have to. Don't have to. I mean, listen, it won't be bad. If you ran out, you're making right. it and you knew, you, know, you served more last right. night than you thought, okay, but it's fine. the goal okay. would be to make it today there's, and serve tomorrow. There's plenty of Sundays I'll make this in the morning. Sure. You know, sometimes I'll make it on Saturday by the time. Right. But normally for, you know, Sunday dinner, you know, I got people coming over. I like to make it on Saturday, but not, I mean, I make it Sunday plenty of times. One, that's how my parents did it. And nothing better than Sunday morning and your house smelling like fresh bread. Right. All right. So I, I like that. I know that's part of my childhood memory. I try to make that part of my kid's childhood memory. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I try to do it on Sundays. But if I'm doing other things for Sunday, if, I'm, if we're having lunch too, then I like to do this on Saturday. And then okay. Sunday I'll, I'll do chicken cups for one day. All right. So here, here's what we have, right? We have the onions finely chopped, the pork finely chopped, parsley, basil. Here we have the pork. Uh, I got boneless country ribs. Uh, they're usually cut about two inches. I slice them down as thin as I could. You told I, me that earlier. This is one of the improvements you made to. Well, I, I had approval on Nona and, and, and my mother, you know, because my, my Nona made it great. My mother even got a little bit better. <laughs> so I feel like I took it to the next level. Okay. Right? Uh, I like it this way because this is going to melt into the gravy and you'll get little shreds, little, little chunks of pork in every bite. Okay. Where how they did it, they would leave a bigger piece and cook it. I felt like that got dried out. Yeah. Even though if you sear it at first, it still got dried out. Okay. Right. And it's a little harder to eat too because you know you got the bowl pasta plus big piece of pork on it and you're trying it. This way, every plate there's some pork. It's not dried out. You don't have to sear it. It just it comes delicious. So you're, you're going to get to see. I can't wait. Right. So we got a pork, uh, salt and pepper, tomato puree, tomato paste. Uh, another trick of the trade is is Chris oh. getting out of the container like that. Oh, you gonna you gonna tell them or are you gonna hold that to your, so, your little secret? I, I I don't like to tell anybody because I like to watch people fight with the can, <laughs> right? With the spoon in there, they're trying to get it out. They're like banging the spoon all over the pot. Like everybody's pot's got a, like a deck right here, and I'm trying to bang the paste onto it. So I just got tired of doing that. So instead of just when I threw the can opener, take the top lid off, then I turn it upside down and I use the can opener again. The air goes in, and you push the top of the lid, and you push it right out and take it off. It, it, it was like magic. Right. Well, I wasn't going to tell anybody, but you see me do it. So I then I was like, her, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I saw the first one out. I'm like, well, that's interesting. Out the end, I followed plenty of hands, right. and I'm like, let me look over how he's doing the second one. Yeah. And I was, I was impressed. Like, right. well, I got to tell people. I had, now. A, I had a, right. I blow the secret <laughs> up. <laughs> I got to tell people now, but all right, no problem. All right, so this is what we got. So this is a really simple process, okay? We're, we're going to, a little bit of olive oil. We're going to go with the onions first, right? Two to three minutes. Then the garlic. You know, another minute, salt and pepper that. Season and layers. Once we salt and pepper that, we're going to go with the paste. We're going to let that fry in there for a few minutes. And then we're going to go with the puree and then a can and a half of water, okay? All right, we're going to salt and pepper it again. Get it stirred, get it combined. I use, I like to use a whisk sometimes to get the paste and, and the puree combined. And then we're going to go with the fresh herbs. All right. Now at the end, we'll use more fresh herbs. Okay. But I want this to cook and, and add more flavor. But at the end, you always want to use some fresh herbs. But I mean, that's it. That's the process. So we're going to get started. Perfect. Okay. So Scott, did you make any kind of, uh, anything for macaroni? Yeah, probably, probably what we're going to play with later, the, the sauce out of the jar. <laughs> oh, God. I'm taking notes, though, on this one. Oh, come so on. I'm taking some notes. <laughs> your wife, does your wife do anything? She's on the baking side. She'll bake everything, but not as much on the cooking right. side. You know, it's just a little weird, because if you come down to South Philly, on Sundays, you got the guys with the white beaters on. <laughs> And, uh, so if I drive through, I'm going to see you in the, in the white beard? I don't go white beard no more. I'm a little too old. But I do do the white uh, t-shirt with the bean neck and you know, I got short <laughs> sleeves. Yeah, I got to fit it. Everybody else is looking like that. I got to look like that too. 
But uh, yeah, you see the woman back from the store with the can of tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> So I said, we can get this in for like two, three minutes. Yeah, what's all saying? We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not trying to try. Okay. okay. So I, I get this started, but then I'll turn it down a little bit. Right now, we're turn it down. So, because I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to fry. I don't want to brown. So, okay, real nice and light. Got to have a good pot for this. You can't use a cheap pot because it's a thicker sauce, right? So it's going to, mm -hmm. oh, it's just a sticker. <laughs> and, and, and it's, it's going to burn if you don't stay on top of it, right? So that's why you just want to make sure that you stay on it, you're stirring it. And it depends on, on, on your stove. If your stove, like yeah. this commercial stove, right? You, you're going to have to really stir every three to five minutes. And walk them by and stir it. Yeah. You know, in the restaurants it used to be like a tag team effect. You know, every time you go by, start it ready. No matter who you are. Right. I don't care if somebody just started, start it again. Make sure it doesn't burn. You're not going to hurt it, right? <laughs> right. Just want to make sure it don't burn. You know, it, it's a nice thick gravy. I feel like you look your kitchen does like a general manager. That always made you look like you were like, you were doing the kitchen. You walk by, right. you're right. a little star, and walk right. through. Look at I don't like that guy yeah. looking for something. <laughs> I like when they used to do this, right? People that don't know nothing, they would go, I don't like them. I said, what are you smelling for? Right. All right, so now we're going to garlic. The garlic in, you're going to really see a different aroma. She can smell the onions. Oh, yeah. But once we get the garlic in, we get a totally different aroma. And this only has to go for like a minute. The garlic will burn pretty quickly, right? Yeah. But you want to get it in the oil, flavor the oil. So I'm small, smaller right now. Oh, yeah. That's how you, that's how you know your gravy's going to be good. When you smell that, when you're a little yeah, kid right. on Sunday morning and you smell this, you know the meatballs ain't far behind. <laughs> <laughs> and you get ready for that day, man. Let me tell you. I miss those days because now I got to create the smell. Right, right. I like the better when I was upstairs and my mother and father was creating the smell or Norma. So we're good there. I'm going to turn this down while I get the taste in. So you want to fry this. If you don't fry it, the paste, it's a really, it has a different flavor. It's all like. So you just want to make sure that you got to fry it up in there. And for this, you could turn the heat up some because this could definitely hold the heat. So we'll get flat there. I'll get it in there. That kind of combine us a little bit. Have you seen a version of this one we were in California? You could have heard of this. I made a version for McClell's. Wasn't exactly this, but I definitely made a version. The base was similar though. Right, similar, right, right. 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 Yes, right. yes, yes. Right. I definitely made a uh, version for them. And, we're, and that was still gravy for the sand, for the slider. It was gravy. Okay. They cooked the meatballs in it. But she was big on crushed tomatoes. Not pure. Right. So that's fine. We can do with that. And they grow their own rosemary there. Right. So I wanted to use rosemary in yeah. it. Yeah. You know. But you see how it starts getting, getting really loose now? I mean, yeah. the difference from how it was. Quick. Right. Yeah. And it's going to bubble up a little bit. So you start bubbling. And we're going to see how easy it moves from like my first period. Right. Now I'm going to turn it down so we get everything else in. Start. That's going to get me a little bit of water. There we go. So I'm going to combine this in. After I get the water, Get some salt and pepper in here. Season it lighter. Scott rounded up some fresh pepper earlier. Get this all combined. Okay, that's 
Smells good. Looks good. Smells good. Absolutely. So I start with a can and a half. I'll probably add another can later. So make sure you get everything inside. You don't want to waste any of it. So this is where I go to my whisk. I'm going to turn up the heat all the way up now, high as it goes. Now, with everything in there, you're not going to burn it. Now well, it's coming together pretty nicely. Yeah. Great color. Once we get it whipped all in, we'll add the fresh herbs. See how, how thick it is though? There's no sauce. Right. That's, that's no sauce. As it cooks, it gets thicker. All right. That's it for the whisk. Everybody in the pool. <laughs> there you go. Starting, like that, starting, like that. Already starting to bubble up. So we get all these herbs incorporated, then we're going to put a little more, we're going to taste and go salt and pepper. There you go. Look at that. Listen, anybody can do this. This is not hard. The problem is people don't know how easy it is, and, and they and they get scared. They get intimidated. More salt. Close. Yeah, and do this to taste. I'm not going to tell you how much salt and pepper to put in it because everyone's different. Forks in and it cooks down a little bit. But right now, I think we're pretty good. Now, if you were to eat just that, great. It has a lot of great flavor. I mean, it's, and it's not even, even combined yet. And tomatoes, right. absolutely. But it's not even combined yet, all the flavor, right. right? Right. It's only been cooked in 30 seconds. So I'm going to add the pork now. Starting start to get bubbling up. Now, is there something you would use that salt, you know, that gravy for without? Oh, I, I, I'll make it just like this. Okay, if you're done with it, and, and go. With, you know, it's no meat. We've not okay. any meat, like during lunch or whatever. Sure. Or I put the pork. I put the meatballs. Okay. Right. Uh, I'll okay. do the same exact gravy. Spare ribs. Okay. One of my favorite. Yeah, I, spare I, I ribs. I like spare ribs. So with with this base, there's so much you could do with it. Okay. You know, it's you're not limited to just pork. Uh, I'll get beef stew. From the butcher, and I'll put that in it, and it, it does the same thing this does. It melts right. down into in, into it. Uh, that's what my wife likes the best. This is the one I like the best. Okay. Well, the spare is like the best. I just don't do it all the time because obviously when you spare, I need a bigger pot. Right. I do have a bigger pot to do it in, but it's just I have to have to go down the basement. Get it? It's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's extra steps. <laughs> you know I me, mean? extra steps. I don't like that. From the guy that will cook, you know. 
for 10 people, an army's worth of food. Yeah. He doesn't want to walk down the basement. Down to basement. Get <laughs> My wife gets mad at me. I'm like, well, I'm a cook. We put everything in a basement. I, you know, where, where's the blender? Where's this? Where's that? She's like, down the basement. Why are you making it then? <laughs> As, as the chef of the house, I think a fair rule is that it should do whatever it should be where I need it. It should be where you need it, right? That's I, you know. how I feel. She, she feels different. I, I can imagine. <laughs> and we know who wins that. There's no doubt on it. It depends how bad she wants something. Fair, right. right. Exactly. Sometimes she'll go get what I need down there. And, again, if, it, if it's a choice between her getting you to cook what she wants or not. Right. So go get it. Go get it. I'm going to get it. <laughs> you drew the line in the sand. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I can't find it anyway. <laughs> I'm down. I'm like, where's it at? I can't find it. So she might as well just go get it. So this is it now. We're going to let this go, like I said, at least two and a half hours. Okay. All right. Uh, now, once it starts to bubble, all, like it's bubbling around the edges, but we want to get it inside here, bubbling in the middle. Uh, so once it does that, I'm going to turn it down to, to a simmer. Uh, I'll put the lid like three quarters of the way on. Uh, you want to let, let some of the steam out, you kind of go like that with it. Okay. okay just leave that like that. Uh, I'm still going to add another half of water uh, soon. Yeah. Did you see how thick it is already? Yes. I want it to cook. I don't want it to be this thick right now. Right. Okay. I just want to get the middle right now. I just want to get the middle bubble, and then we know we're, we're hot all the way through. We're starting to save, save. Yeah. So I can get in there. Then I know we're hot all the way through with, with the gravy. Put the lid on it. Well, it's it's work. Watch Netflix or yeah, we'll do salt and talks on. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Maybe we got baseball court outside. So. <laughs> yeah, we're good. All right. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're where we want to be. get this turned down a little bit. Okay. There we go. Remember, this this has to be stirred often. I'm talking minutes, five minutes. You know, for the whole time. Ten minutes. It depends on yeah. You know, sometimes, like, I, honestly, when I'm doing this at home and it's Sunday and, you know, I don't know, I'm looking at football stuff or whatever, right. I set a timer on my phone. Okay. <laughs> because I forget. And you'll burn it. And nothing worse than burnt gravy. So, yeah. So, we're going to let that go. Uh, we'll come back to you when it's ready. And we're going to we'll show, you, show you the finished it. product. And eat it. Yep. I'll definitely <laughs> eat it. Thanks for watching F Your Business Podcast. We want to take a minute and talk to you about our ops keeping. Yeah, we understand the challenges right now, whether it's developing a general manager, a district manager, or above that. You know, and, that, and that's where we let us and the Largo team come in and help to establish those routines, um, establish some of those you know, training and measurables, and let us be part of it along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, we've been doing this for quite a few restaurants. It's been very successful. We've been able to get through the managers and help them develop and move up the ladder. Uh, you know, into your restaurant and do and do amazing things, do great things. But they need someone that's going to hold them accountable and keep them moving forward. And that's what we do. All right, we're well, back. Here we are. It's almost, it's almost it's lunch time. time. It's time. So we got this Sunday pork gravy, known as Sunday pork gravy. Little little penne here I, I I cooked off. Got the gravy here. All I did to this, well that heated in a separate pot with a little bit of pasta water. Okay. And we said it ended up taking about how long to cook that? Not not the original you know, because we were oh it always goes different, like it's not how you have you know you're cooking it. But we went just about two and a half hours. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we were just about two and a half hours. Alright, so we're good here. A little more. A little more of grandma in there. A little more Nolan sauce in there. Alright, here we go. Plate it up. Nice in here. You see that pork all the way through. Yeah, but like you were saying in the beginning, like it's going to be be shredded, little pieces. Right, and that's you know, exactly not what it is. big chunks of, of pork. And again, nothing that makes it better or worse, but it looks awesome how it is. You know, well, I just think it's gonna it, eat really it, it eats better, yeah, for sure. So here's what you do. All right, you got to get a little olive oil. That's how you finish. A little bit of olive oil. That's all you need. A little drizzle. All right, Just a little drizzle around. All right. Put a little pecorino romano, just a little bit. Doesn't need a lot because the flavor in here is awesome. That's it. Then. Gotta get the fresh basil on there. There you go. 
on one cheek. <laughs> we even have the, 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 the alternative sauce that we ordered and we got out of a container. I think they called that a gravy too, if I remember. I don't know. They might have. They I might don't have, think yeah. you would call that a gravy though. No, no. <laughs> But this is a gravy. I mean, if you look at that, if you got a bowl of this in a restaurant, yeah, you're that gonna go awesome. crazy, right? So, all right, I'm just gonna go over here first. I just wanna get this added away. Uh, I don't even see any pork or anything. It looks bad. Really, no flavor. No. And again, this this was one of like the higher end brands, right? That people are using in a restaurant to serve those, so it's not like it's just some. No. And I guess now we get to try. There you go here. You want a plate? Want to throw a plate? Yeah, we get a couple small bowls and yeah, yeah, now small bowl for portion out. Yeah. Uh, you know, because you're not going to stop once you start. So yeah, flavor is, is very limited on that one. Yeah, I don't know. Had a limited, would be weird. limited would yeah. be generous. <laughs> it had a weird. A weird, uh, like an weird aftertaste yeah. almost. There you go. That's what a ball should look like. I mean, a beautiful presentation, everything. No macaronis are out that day. Or you just give me the big one. You keep that little <laughs> tiny. Uh... There you go. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Like. I'm excited. I'm very excited for this one. Wow. That's really good. I don't know what your not is like. This is really good. <laughs> Close. It's like, I just shred the pork more. Really. Makes a difference. I like it more. I like every bite you got pork. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, you got a nice al dente macaroni with it. A little bite. Is it cook, the, the pork just cooks down perfectly to it. Yeah, it's not dry. It's moist. But even the salt. I mean, even the pork, obviously... Is awesome. But if you just had a sauceless, is a million times better than sauce that is in this. Right. It's not even comparable. Right, you could uh you say you could stop and don't add a protein. And you have a great right. It would still be a great, great dish. product, yeah. Yeah. But no, this this is great. It's as good as it always is. Mm. Well, I don't think much of a challenge, but I know we'll be finishing up our lunch. Huh. Yeah. So we're gonna let people try it. It's not. There's no way it does it right. So, but, but this is it. Simple to do. Yeah. The hardest part really is having it cook for that, you know, two and a half to three hours. You have to stay on top. Make sure you stir it. Other than that, it's simple. A few ingredients. Yeah, but it's amazing. It's amazing. That's something. If you serve that in your restaurant, people are coming back for it. Yeah, definitely. Not yeah. Amazing. And again, I know restaurants that do a, a version of this, their own version. Sounds good. Right. Uh, but they only do it on Sunday. Okay. So Sunday really becomes popular today. Yeah, So People want to come for it. You know, I don't know if you want to do that, but maybe start that as a special right. every Sunday. Sure. Then see if it grows into a Friday, Saturday special, then maybe make it onto the menu. But it's definitely something to try. Uh, don't be afraid to. Again, check us out at fyourbusinessmovement.com. If you challenge you like to see us do, let us know. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next week.